Do you remember Lee and Lee's Uni SL Infinity fans? Well, I certainly do. It was the very first time in close to a year that a fan has finally beaten the noise to performance record that a fan has set in a hybrid case almost heatsink benchmark since the goddamn Noxia NF812X25. And our review pretty much praised those things for being the overall best fans we have seen until that very day. Now, apparently, somebody told Lee and Lee that fans do not need to be 120 and that 140 mil form factor also exists. And voila, Lee and Lee's Uni SL Infinity 140. But no, those are not the exact same fans, but in a bigger form factor. Sure, they have a lot of similarities, like the design, the because yes, it's basically 100% the same design, and the fan wing design, because we still have the same seven long wing design, just bigger, but the numbers are totally different. This time, those things are spinning at up to 1600 RPM, while it's pushing up to 72.7 CFM at up to 2.88 mm of H2O and 28 dB. Now, unfortunately, after being around fans a bit too much in my life, I do know two things. First, never believe whatever number a fan manufacturer pays on the spec sheet. And two, the raw RPM number has a way bigger impact than you might think even if it seems like the resulting numbers are saying something else. And on that note, let's have a look at the benchmarks. While it's allowing the Uni SL Infinity 140 fans to spin at their full 1600 RPM in our hybrid case almost heatsink benchmark, they managed to keep the CPU at 44.9 degrees C above ambient. Oh. Unfortunately, that's 4.8 degrees C above the smaller Uni SL120 fans. Oh. At this point, I really want to repeat something uh, out of the How We Benchmark Fans video. All of these numbers are created using whatever means I found to inflate them massively. In reality, the difference between each fan is 3x in our numbers. So what looks like 4 degrees C difference right here is actually just somewhere around 1. If I would have used that in a regular PC with a regular cooler with everything spec'd out and, and so on. But because 1 could still be margin of error, we inflate them massively by not putting a fan onto the CPU cooler. Anyway, the point is, no, the difference is not as huge as it looks like, but it is still a negative difference. In our results, the 140mm version did perform worse than the 120, although all the numbers that Lee and Lee provides are suggesting something different. Now, the result is still not bad, it is still in the upper third, it's just not as good as I expected given how the small ones performed. But it did not end here. On the noise to performance chart, the 140mm version were quite significantly behind the original 120s. Again, overall they do perform exceptionally well, a tick better than the Be Quiet Silent Wing Pro 4, 140 for example, but still a lot behind the 120s. And they are not even beating Noxia's NFA14s, which are a decade old. Performance-wise, it's good, but not amazing. It's, it's just not as great as it should have been. Now, the only question that remains is to why. Well, I found a few things. Design-wise, there doesn't seem to be any significant difference. Still the same wing design or layout, still seven. They may be a tick longer and thicker, but that's due to the size. But something interesting is the part in the middle. Actually, the central hub is slightly bigger than on the original one. Where the original had slightly below 40 millimeters in diameter, the new ones have about 45. And that, that can have a significant impact on performance. The other reason, and the main reason in my opinion, is the raw RPM number alone. 
To give you an example why I have this conclusion, take the Noxia NF A12, F12 and S12. All three of those are pushing quite similar amounts of CFM. They differ pretty significantly in static pressure, but the amount of air doesn't really. Or just take the A12 and F12. For both of them, the amount of pressure is not that different, and given that they are both from the same manufacturer, I do believe that we can kind of at least believe the numbers in relation to one another and that nobody's lying there. But in our benchmark, the A12 is a chart topper, while the F12 is barely even playing the game. Add the S12A to that and uh, you can clearly see which one is the winner and who's the loser here. And at the very least, the A12 and F12 should have performed somewhat in the same category, but they don't. Plus add to that that we do not really test static pressure, it's not a radiator test, there is nothing really obstructing the fan, so the static pressure that the F12 has really doesn't matter that much. And you know what this ranking also could be used for? Their raw fan speed numbers, 2500 and 1200, nicely in a line. And although it's pretty clear that the S12 shouldn't keep up in the first place, at least the F and A12 should be somewhat similar but they are just not. And in the past I have seen this behavior again and again and again. If you have two similar fans, even if, if the size differs, even if the number differ, or the, the numbers on the spec sheet differ, the quicker fan will win, or most of the time it will win. By all metrics, although the SL140 is a pretty good fan for a 140, and it really is, it, it beat the Silent Ring 4 Pro, which is a pretty good start, it is just not as good as the smaller one. But it is still a uni fan, and leaving out performance for a second, if uni fan can do one thing, then it is to be goddamn beautiful, and they did it again. Just like the 120s, these fans are on ARGB overload. We have an infinity mirror in the center, an infinity mirror on two sides of the frame, a strong shining fan wing, and those beautiful thin lines going around the fan. They are goddamn gorgeous. And I'm not an RGB fan, but these things are gorgeous. And the proprietary connection system is back too. Instead of running each fan with individual PVM and ARGB cables, we can daisy chain these suckers into blue blocks by pressing them together and use one of those proprietary cables to connect them to Lee and Lee's controller. And don't forget to remove the two holders on the last one by just twisting them and then pulling them out. No need to leave them in there, it just looks awkward and if you have a radiator this might actually help you. It, it, they potentially can block the tubes. From there we need to give it two SATA powers, although you just need one, the other one is just if you use more than 12 fans, and then connect the whole thing to a motherboard using a 3-pin ARGB and 4-pin PVM cable. And then let's not forget the internal USB connection. Well, that sounded a lot less annoying than it actually is, but uh, anyway, once you are done with all of the cabling mess, you can play around with Lee and Lee's L3 Connect software, and if you haven't watched the original U UniSL120 Infinities video, it is the first and still only software which got the Does Not Annoy Me award, which is quite the accomplishment because I'm very quickly irritated by software. But back to the fan. If you got the triple pack, you can do even more. You could also use individual cables to have one fan in the back or create one cluster where one is chained to the other one and you have one separate one which is like physically away from it or do whatever array of fans your imagination is capable of creating. The sky is really the limit here or your pocket. Your pocket is probably the first limit. Those things are expensive. And of course you could also ignore the controller and use the proprietary to very much not proprietary cable and then just connect them straight to your motherboard. That's also a possibility. Build quality wise, they are still among the very best I have seen. I give them that. But you do feel the structural strength lost due to its size. It's slightly easier to press them together than the 120s, but that's like really due to the size. On that note, something I had to unfortunately find out is that these fans are not fitting everywhere. Similarly to the smaller ones, they are about two millimeters thicker on one of the sides and because of the position and where the connection side is, or uh, the one where you would, you know, connect the fan, not the next fan, there is a possibility that it will not fit in the back. And I had to find this out the hard way because it did not fit into the back spot of our Fantex P500A, which I am using for the benchmarks. But 
I also have to say that the P500A does allow me to uh, customize it a bit with uh, force. So I was able to, uh, to fit them in there, but you need to add some, some good old domestic violence to make that happen. For the price, I would love to give you my take on them, I really would, but I have no idea. I know that it, it's Lee and & Lee and it's Uni SL, so they are expensive compared to like P12s, but right now I have no clue. Unfortunately, I don't know the exact pricing, but I can pretty much guarantee you that they will be at least as expensive as the 120s. So, Uni SL Infinity 140. As a standalone fan, it's pretty good. It's not the best 140, but amongst the best. Given that we know how the smaller ones perform, yeah, they should have been better. Especially because whatever the price tag will be, there is no way that the price tag will be smaller than, for example, a P14 ARGB, and that thing kind of beats them. But if the look is the reason why you want to go with them, you won't do anything wrong. You will still have a relatively good fan, just not the best. But okay, this should be it for Lee and & Lee and their Uni SL Infinity 140. At this point, a huge thank you to Lee & Lee for sending them over. And if you are looking to see how they perform on top of a radiator or a heatsink, a bit more time, we are almost done. On a side note, we also have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And of course, we also still have channel memberships, so if you're looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to get some glue. Because there are so many damn mirrors on the uni fans that it's starting to make sense to just rip all of them out and glue myself a new mirror onto a wall because why not anyway thank you for watching and if you want to continue have a look at our take on the smaller 120s now those are the best ones hope to see you in the next one bye bye